Hi, fellow art literacyers. Here we are. We're going to learn about Van Gogh today. And um, I encourage you to read the biography. He's quite an interesting character. And I like this project because I think his artwork is beautiful. And it's a lot of fun to paint um, with his technique or try to mimic his technique because I think this is one where you get to put on your beret and get your paintbrush and really slap the paint on because that's um, kind of how he built up his paint with very thick texture. So it's a lot of fun. So I hope you enjoy it. I hope your students enjoy it. Hi, okay, so ready for our project, um, our Van Gogh project. We are going to do um, an impasto style painting and it'll be similar to one of his works. So we have a couple of inspirations. Um, you can look at his, uh, I think this is the Cypress wheat field. And we also have, um, of course, Starry Night is a good example. Um, and then there's his flowers. But the students can choose to paint anything. We're not gonna try and do a paint by number, so they're gonna choose um, their subject. But you can see kind of the style through these, so take a look at them um, for yourself so that you know, you can sort of understand um, what style of painting we're doing and how he worked with colors. Um, so the first thing you wanna have your students do is we're gonna work on our background. And the student can choose uh, with watercolor, this is pretty thick paper, so it'll hold a lot of paint and the witness. They can choose either portrait or landscape style um, to paint on, and it's a nine by 12 paper. Have them take a thick brush, this is the first one you wanna use, and the first thing we're gonna do is kind of figure out where we want our horizon line. At this point, the student may not have an idea what they're gonna paint, that's okay. Just have them pick a color, um, blue, red, yellow, uh, what color they like, and then some white, and that's all you wanna give them to start with. Have them pick their horizon. Generally, um, one third, one half, or two thirds of the paper, and obviously, if you're gonna do portrait, you could do it down here, you could do it halfway, you could do it up here, it won't matter, they can choose, okay? Just have them figure out kind of where they want that line. And the first thing you're going to do, then take your brush, load it up with full color, and just paint that horizon line, okay? Mine's not particularly straight, that's okay. I may decide, hmm, maybe I want to add a little bit of a shape here, okay, just to give a little interest. I don't really have a plan at this point, all right, but I did paint a line. Now I'm going to keep painting down. Here, um, you can either choose to paint the bottom first or the top, it won't matter. So keep going with a little bit of color. And one thing to do is you might wanna just move that to a new compartment. Then I'm gonna load up the brush with a little white. I'm gonna mix that in. Okay, I don't wanna mix it too much. This is the other thing with painting thick. If I mix it too much, I don't get this nice streak effect, which I think is kind of fun. And I'm gonna paint the whole background. and I can work with various tints of that color, either full color, um, dark color, and maybe I keep going with a little more dark down here, make it a little more interesting. I also may wanna leave, this is an option, you can leave um, one, two, maybe three areas uh, blank. Don't paint certain areas in the canvas, and I'll explain why we're gonna do that later. But keep going. With your color, notice I'm not really mixing this too much. We don't want to mix it because then we don't get these fun accent areas. I'm going to leave, um, let's see, let's leave some space not painted. Okay, I'm also not too worried about whether my, I'm going to just cover the whole painting. Having the students work on their background, this is doing the background, and we want to just create a little bit of a horizon. So they can do darker um, on the bottom and then lighter on top, or it can go the other way, it can be darker on top and lighter on bottom, you know, above or below the horizon. That's really the student's choice. The main thing is just get full color right along the horizon line, and that's just so that we remember um, and they can see, okay, this is where they put their floor um, or, you know, whatever becomes a lake, grass. Um, a wheat field, whatever it is, they'll see where their dividing line is. 
And then in terms of mixing the paint, one of the tricks I like to do actually is put color on one side of the brush and then white on the other side. And it's kind of neat. And if you don't press too hard, you'll actually get streaks. Um, and he had kind of a short choppy style and you can see that there's actually a lot of color. So you can see how that comes out. That's actually kind of similar to the way he would paint. Now, of course, he maybe did it with more attention, but um, it's, it's nice to have that sort of rhythm and you can see the strokes and you can see how much paint there is there. So if I press too hard, I'm gonna mix the paint and I won't get as much of a buildup of paint layers, which is what I wanna do. Also mistakes are to be encouraged in this because we're gonna paint right over it. Um, now what Jessica's doing is she's painting right on top of what is wet paint. That's great, but you wanna load up your brush with more white paint and then press very gently and you're gonna get a better coverage on top for your clouds. Okay, so once you get your background filled in the way you want, um, and now notice in mine it's a little darker um, and a little lighter on top. You want a little bit of a change of color. Um, and then I have some areas where you can fully see white. It's not mixed up very well and it's very sort of chunky, thick paint. Um, and that's kind of the rhythm that we're going through. I also left a lot of areas blank um, you know, one large area and then an area over here and a little area there. I'm going to fill that in with the second color and I don't want to muddy my colors too much. So that's an option too. You can allow students to pick, you know, one, two, three is probably enough um, areas where they're just going to leave it blank instead of filling up the whole canvas. So now you want to have them focus on the composition. And one thing they can do is pick a contrasting color to work with and they can start to think, okay, what is it I want to paint? Now that I've got this down, do I want to paint um, a landscape scene with ground, could be grass, could be bushes, maybe a tree, uh, mountains, we can do oceans, um, we can do an inside scene where we have a floor or a table and the wall. Um, those are options I think we want to discourage uh, for this project painting people, animals, let's stick to you know uh, inanimate or uh, landscape type scenes. Those will go better for this project. Um, and then have them start to think about composition. All right, well, what do they want to paint? Do they want to put a mountain in her or a boat? Or um, my, I'm, I'm looking at mine, which is blue, and so I'm thinking water. Um, I could put a mountain, I could put, um, uh, you know, various compositions. I may do something kind of similar to Starry Night where I put a sun or some clouds or, um, you know, stars zipping around in there. There's, there's a lot of options for them. Flowers are a nice thing. Um, here's a couple of done techniques just, just to give you a couple of ideas of what you could do. And I started with this background. It was actually all yellow, and then I started adding darker colors on top of it. Um, and then here's another example of more of a still life. Okay, but you can see the background working here. And we can go back and fill in more of this background too. So have them start thinking about composition and remember that we have foreground and background. So larger objects in the front, smaller objects in the back. Have them pick a contrasting color and use your small brush and we'll start just outlining where we want to place things. So that's kind of the second step here. Um, okay, so I'm just outlining. Um, I'm thinking of this as some sort of a mountain here, um, and then maybe a little sun um, peeking through. I don't really have a plan. I'm kind of just adding a little color. Uh, but I've got a larger object here in the foreground, and then I'm going to put some things here um, in my sky. And I think I'm going to fill in this area that I left blank with a little yellow. Then this picture now in real time of about three minutes, we put the blue and the white on and now I'm putting yellow over and notice if I press very lightly and load up my paintbrush with a lot of paint, I'm still getting yellow over top. If I want to mix it more, which I will at some point, I'm going to start getting a little green, right? Because yellow and blue equal green. Um, so you'll see that start to evolve as we paint more because I'm going to next I'm going to fill in my mountain a little bit and then add a little more texture to the sky going on. Um, and I may even add a little ground over here, maybe turn part of this into a lake, I think. So let's do that. Let's just add a little. Okay. Okay, that's all I wanted to sort of point out. 
this brush that I had done the background on, I'm gonna keep that one, and I'm gonna um, use that to start blending in, you know, some of these colors, okay. And maybe add a little blue in here. Okay. And see how it's kind of turning green now? I'm pressing a little more firmly, but if I don't want any mixing at all, then I need to really press lightly. I'm trying to show um, how I'm mixing colors. I, I've only used blue and yellow and white so far on this, and I'm kind of trying to establish a little more of a ground um, and maybe a lake was my thought, and then I haven't started really working much on the sky yet. And this is gonna turn into a mountain, um, this yellow thought, and I didn't really plan out the shape too much yet. But you can see I'm getting a lot of green and I'm trying to do various shades of green. And my palette, um, so I'm starting to mix the paints, obviously the brushes are getting a little, um, you know, mixed up. So that's why, you know, you have to sometimes use a new brush, but I've got, I still got a pretty good clear white on one side of the brush. And then I'm using this to paint. And then when I want more yellow green, I'm using this brush. And then for finer detail, I still have one brush that only has yellow on it. Um, so that's how I'm working. And as my brush gets too muddy, um, we're gonna use the paper towels to wipe it off. And that way, maybe I've got a little too much green on this. If I wanna add a little more yellow on this brush, I can kind of wipe it off a little, rather than using water until we're ready to fully clean the brush. And then I got um, a pretty good yellow still in here to start mixing with. Um, I, did, I started off with a vase where I used a small brush and I took some blue and I kind of outlined the vase. And then to fill it in, I did, um, I filled up with half white and half blue and I just start going back and forth, back and forth. And then, and then I just randomly sometimes did blue and sometimes did white and just did that. And I guess maybe it's, sometimes it picked up some of the yellow and it dragged it with it and gave it a little bit of green. Um, so overall it just kind of gives it, and then for the, um, to do the flower, this flower has no name, I just completely made it up. Um, try to make some green and yellow to get a little bit slight stem in the back. And then to do the flowers, all I did was I um, put half of the brush in white and the other half in red, and I just did dabs here and there in like star formation. And it's my made up flower, it's nothing real. But um, anyway, that's where we are. So after you've um, filled in your detail, you start working with probably a, another contrasting color or two, like Tia did. Then um, the last step is we're going to add even more texture as you've been building up the paint layers. We have these soap, soap flakes, and you can just um, pour a little bit. Think of it like salt. You're just going to add a little bit to the student's paint palette. And then with whatever, um, they're going to decide what object needs um, some special texture. So you don't want to do the entire painting this way, but just something special. So maybe I'll do um, what's, I don't, I can't decide yet if that's a, uh, I think it's some sort of a bush. So I'm going to um, take my paint brush. It's still got some paint on it and that I've been working with. And I'm going to just dip it in these um, zote flakes and I'm going to paint this on. And it's maybe hard to see on the video, but it adds a pretty thick layer of paint um, and it gives, the, gives a lot of texture. So as you're looking at it up close, you'll see there's quite a bit of raised paint now on that. Um, and so that's how we add even more texture on top of these. So, you so the main thing with this uh, painting is not to be afraid. Just go for it. I think Van Gogh, when he painted, he just kept layering the paint on top. So if you get students and they're upset by, oh, I got this color streak here and that's not what they wanted, um, give it a, a minute or two and then load up the paint with another color and you can gently, with your brush, paint right over it. Um, you'd be surprised. So it's very forgiving. And, and really a lot of the accidents end up being very cool. Um, you can really use a lot of them. So I think there's room for that as well in your art project.